Hey guys, Mr. T here. This is another video. This one is on adding and subtracting algebraic fractions. So, like all these other videos, the rules for adding and subtracting algebraic fractions is the same as adding and subtracting any normal fractions. It's just different here because you need to worry about variables. So, to add or subtract algebraic fractions, what? Express both fractions with the same denominator. So, I'm not... Um, a lot of people ask you or suggest to you to find the lowest common denominator, but that requires a lot of thinking, and you might not be so good with your times tables. So all I need you to do with this method is to express both fractions with the same denominator, and then you can cancel that later. So the easiest denominator to use that's common to both is just the product of the denominators of the original fractions. So the bottom number of... Um, the original two fractions that you're adding and subtracting is a denominator. If you times those together, that is a common denominator that you can express both fractions as. Okay? Then, two, after you've expressed both fractions with that same denominator, you add or subtract the resulting numerators um, um, to, to get the answer, um, depending on whether you're adding or subtracting. And then after that, you cancel any common factors to write the answer in simplest form. So, to show you how this all works, because that step of um, writing with the same denominator can be a little tricky if you haven't dealt with fractions for a while. So here, I know already in my head that the lowest common denominator is going to be um, 4. But to save you from thinking that, if you've got more complicated numbers, let's say it was 13 and 22, it's not easy to find a number that both of those go into. So um, straight away you can instead do 2 times by 4, which gives you 8. So that's a common denominator you can use. Now you just need to work out how to express x on 2, the denominator of 8. x on 2 you want to express it with the denominator of 8. Well, what do you need to times 2 by to get 8? You times it by 4. So you, to avoid changing the fraction, changing what the, the numbers were that you were adding and subtracting together, you need to times both the top and the bottom by that same number. So that is dealing with x on 2. We need to deal with the other side, 3x on 4. What would I have to times 4 by to get 8? Well, I times it by 2. So to avoid changing the, the numbers we were adding and subtracting together, we need to times the top and the bottom by the same number. So now we get, what's 4 times by x? It's 4x over 2 times by 4, 8. Plus, what's 3x times by 2? Well, that's 6x over what's 4 times by 2, 8. So now you can see we pretty quickly got the original fractions, x on 2 and 3x on 4, expressed in terms of the denominator 8. Okay, does this make sense? Well, x on 2 is half of x. Does this cancel down? Well, 4 um, goes into 8 twice, so it's 1 over 2, half of x. Okay, it's the same. We haven't changed the number, we've just expressed it in terms of the denominator 8. And 3 quarters x, well, 6 is 3 quarters of 8, so we haven't changed it here. All we've done is write 3 quarters x in terms of the denominator 8. So now we can add or subtract these denominators because we were adding, well, not denominators, numerators. Because we were adding, we're going to add the numerators. So it's 4x plus 6x, and we're allowed to add them now because they were both the same denominator. So you go through all this kerfuffle here because you cannot add or subtract numbers or fractions with a different denominator. You can't add or subtract different kinds of pieces, okay? They all have to be the same kind of pieces, and the pieces in this case are eighths. So now that we decided eights were our pieces. We can add those numerators. 4x plus 6x is 10x over 8. And now we can do the cancelling down. 10 divides into 2 nicely. 8 divides into 2 nicely. So 5 on 4x.
5x on 4, sorry, because there's no x on the bottom. So 5 over 4x. Not 5x on 4 is the answer to that. Fully, um, fa um, fully cancelled down. Next, we have a on 3, take 2a on 5. So here's an example why I suggest doing this method instead of trying to find the lowest common denominator. If you're not good with your um, 3 times tables and 5 times tables, it might take you a while. So instead, just times them out straight away. 3 times by 5 is 15, so that's our common denominator. So a on 3. What did I have to times 3 by to get 15? I times it by 5. To avoid changing the number, I have to times the top and the bottom by 5. I'm subtracting, so it's 2a on 5. What did I have to times 5 by to get 15? I have to times it by 3. Times both the top and the bottom by 3. So a times by 5 is 5a on 3 times by 5, 15. Take away 2a times 3, which is 6a's on 5 times by 3, 15. So we've now expressed them in terms of fifteenths, it's a subtraction, so we subtract the numerators over the same denominator, 5a takes 6a over 15, 5a's take 6a's is negative 1a over 15, so it's negative a over 15. Alright, so that is how you can deal with um, adding and subtracting algebraic fractions. There's no cancelling down to do in that last one. So hopefully that helps you out, and I will see you in the next video.